Okay. It's our new uh, home robot companion, Woody. No, it's okay. a little tiny. Um, it's a little tiny. Yeah. Okay. So this is uh, a little wooden. It's a, I think a one foot tall wooden mannequin figurine um, that's used for posing an artist. And you know, it's, a common, it's a common gift that you see in, in art supply stores. Yeah. We gave these away in our Ada box so people could do. Um, cool time lapses and we ended up with a couple hundred extra because we don't yeah. always know how many we're going to get and how many need to be repaired and replaced so we have a couple extra and they're in the clearance bin uh, pick them up for a yeah. buck a great a great add-on to your next order and you can paint these you can do fun stuff with it it's good to put clay on top you can make them into figurines you can um, put jewelry on them you can do all sorts of stuff yeah. um they're fun if you're a kid kids like these. okay next up. okay next up we've got um we've had these fan cases for the pi four and now we have a fan case for the Pi 5. It's like a heat sink fan case. These are kind of cool. They're like solid chunks of aluminum. Um, they have a, a bottom piece that screws in and a top piece. And you'll see all the ports are exposed so you can connect um, the uh, PoE hat. You connect to the debug port, uh, of, course the, of course, to the camera port, um, the two uh, video port, sorry, the PCIe port, the two camera video ports, and the fan port. Um, what's nice is because the Pi 5 has a fan connection that's separate than the 2x20 headers is that you can, if you get a little wiser thing, you can connect um, hats on top. So you can add like a PoE hat on top or, a, you know, um, a PCIe hat or whatever, as long as your cable is long enough. Um, yeah, it comes with one fan, which you put in and it goes through the fan control system so you can turn it on and off. It's not on all the time. It'll only turn on when you're really uh, pushing the Pi 5 um, quite along and it's got uh, little heat sink things to attach the case um, onto the hot elements, the um, the main chip and uh, the RAM and stuff. So uh, check it out. It's uh, for the Pi 5 only. Okay. Next up. Um, next up, we've got a special version of the Sparkle Motion Mini. This is our that's little great. WLED board. That's, that's cute. It's the tiniest board I can make that kind of does everything for ESP32. Um, oh, WLED. That's nice. That's nice. Yeah, it's got... <sighs> cute that is on the back. That's yeah, cute. it's got... Um, a fuse for, uh, you know, I think five amps, maybe four amps, um, four layer board, ESP32 classic module, I squared C, and also, a, you know, three pin power ground data for like external sensor peripheral, um, mode button, built in uh, USB serial converter, and then uh, two level shifted outputs. So you could do dot star or two NeoPixel strands. And there's also a couple of GPIO pads if you want to like connect a, you know, some other accessory or a rotary encoder. It's just really tiny. Um, and we sell a version without the terminal block. This one has a terminal block in it. Of course, it, it makes it bigger. So it's not as, you know, not as compact. And it overlaps like one of the um, breakout holes. But if you want to have a no solder solution, it's now a no solder solution. All right. And then uh, last up. The star of the show tonight, we did it besides you, the refresh button on CNN, our community, our customers, our entire team, and everything that makes Adafruit go is... Da, 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 da. The INA 237 breakout. It, which peaks, it peaks your power. It peaks at your power. So this is a power monitor in the same family as the INA 219 and the 228. In fact, it's pin compatible with the 228, but it's got a couple things that make it different. One, it's a lot less expensive. So if you don't need a 20-bit DC power monitor, this is a 16-bit. So that's where the, the price uh, is lower. It has otherwise pretty much the same specifications. It can do um, up to 85 volts DC monitoring, either high side or low side. Um, it can do uh, either high resolution, high, you know, quote, unquote, high resolution 2.5 amp or lower resolution, but higher range 10 amp readings um, through the 0 0.015 ohm onboard sensor resistor. You communicate with it over I squared C. You can get instantaneous current voltage on power readings. Um, like I said, it's a, less, a lot less expensive than the 228 because it's less precise, only has 16 bit resolution. And also there's, um, you know, higher offsets for you know, error possibilities. Um, so, you know, if you need precision, uh, high accuracy, the IA228, if you are cool, if it's off by a couple of millivolts, a couple of milliamps here and there, um, and you like that high voltage range that, you know, the 85 volts, uh, this is a great one. We've got a library ready to go. So you can use Arduino and CircuitPython and Python libraries coming very shortly. 
It's not completely code compatible with the INA228. You do have to recompile the code because of that 16 versus 20 bit. And unlike the INA228, it cannot do charge or energy calculations for you. I don't know why, but that's just not included in this chip. It only does current voltage and power, which is still like what 99% of people want. So you can pick it up. It's got everything soldered in. So it's plug and play, no soldering required. And then you just communicate over I2C using your favorite microcontroller or microcomputer. That's new products. New, 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 new.